Hi, this is Petey at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today I wanted to start a tutorial series on how to make a little hack and slash game. Now I'm going to assume you're a little familiar with Unity already with at least the basic controls and moving around. Uh, so I'm probably going to move a little quickly. If I happen to skip over something that you don't quite understand, just leave some comments below and I'll try to help you out as best as I can. So let's start off. We're going to create our project. I'm going to assume you already have Unity. Uh, if you don't, you can find it at unity3d.com. All right, so let's create our project. Uh, we'll create new project. I'm only going to include the standard asset package for now. Uh, let's set where we want it to save. I'm going to put mine on the desktop. I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm just going to simply call it uh, hack and slash. We'll save it. Then click choose. Create. And Unity is going to go through and import all of the assets that are in the packages that we included at the start. So I'm just going to pause the video and resume it once everything's finished importing. All right, Unity is finished importing our assets. And if you notice, down here in our project window, we have the standard assets. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm using Unity 3. Uh, it's the beta 2 version. Right now on their website, they have 2.61 available to the public. I'm not really sure when I'll release this tutorial series, so it might be uh, Unity 3 is out by the time I release this. If not, for the first few weeks anyway, we're not going to be using anything that's Unity 3 specific. So if you have Unity 2.61, you should be fine. So first off, let's create a flat area for us to stand on, some sort of ground. Now we could create a train, but let's just make it even simpler. And we're just going to create a cube. All right. I'm going to reset the cube to its default to the center of the world, 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to scale it up fairly large, 100 by 1 by 100. There we go. So in our game view, we have that bland gray area here. So we're just going to add a directional light to lighten this up a bit. Uh, directional light. Click on our rotate tool. Let's spin it around a bit. Add some lighting. Great. And now let's move it off to the side so we don't have to look at it. Okay. Uh, our main camera is not going to do... We want something attached to the player, so I'm going to open up the prefabs and drag a first-person controller in. And one of the really cool things about Unity 3 is you can drag it around in your scene view and pick where you want it to be. So I'm just going to put it there. I'm going to reset its position to zero on the X. Zero on the Z. Click F to zoom in. So there we go. If we start running around on it, I went through. So I probably am not completely above it. There we go. Actually, let's maximize the screen. I'm recording this in 720p, so it should download a little bit easier, but still give enough quality that you can see what's going on. So yeah, we can just run around. Yeah. Okay, let's add an enemy. Uh, for now, we're just going to add a cube as an enemy. We'll reset his position too. And we're going to call him Evil Cubie. Damn those dashly cubes. So let's bring him up so that he's not in the ground or below it. Let's just move him off to the distance a bit. Hit play. There he is. I'm actually going to change that directional light just a little bit. I kind of like to be able to see a bit of depth in them. So let's see. Actually, I might just have to rotate my cube. So I'm just going to move the cube over so I can see the side of it a bit. That's the wrong cube. That's our floor. We really should rename that. Let's just call it floor. Click Evil Cubie, and let's just move more over it. There you go. I just like to have the 3D view. All right, so if we hit play, sure enough, there he is. We can jump over him, jump on him. Okay. So we're going to notice that on the first person controller, which we should rename to player for now, we have a lot of scripts attached to it. We have a character controller, mouse look, uh, character motor, and an FPS input. 
Now these are new to Unity 3. In Unity 2.61 you just have the FPS walker which takes the place of these two. But that's fine because eventually we're going to rewrite all these the way we want. Uh, for instance, like the mouse look allows you to use the mouse to move around your camera to look at things, which is great in FPS, but not so much in a hack and slash type game. So there we go. All right, so the next thing we're going to want to do is create a little health bar for our player. Uh, so let's start off by creating a folder. We're just going to call this scripts. Uh, right click. I'm going to be using C Sharp for this tutorial series, so we'll just click on the C Sharp script. We'll call it Player Help. Now we're going to be changing these scripts a lot as we go along. Uh, for right now, I just want to quickly prototype up a working example, then we can go through and optimize later. So we got our Player Health script. It's not going to be named correctly yet. I'm going to be using Mono Development for all my script editing and debugging. Now, if you wish to do the same, you should go up to Unity under Preferences and under External Script Editor. By default, it's going to be set to whatever your built-in editor is. For Macs, it's Unitron. For Windows, I believe it's called Unisite. Uh, click Browse. Go to the editor you want to use if it's not the default. For me, that's right here. Just click Open. It should be set. You can close this. Go up to Assets, Sync Mono Development Project, if you're going to use Mono Development. And then just double click your script to open up Mono Development. Okay, so when Mono Development opens, you'll notice you have your solution, your hack and slash project, uh, some references that Unity added, and your assets folder. Here's the script folder you made and the standard assets. And here's our player health script. Since we clicked on it inside of Unity, it opens it up automatically, but we're going to have to rename it to Player Health. And let's just set some, well, I spelled that wrong. And let's just set some default values. So for now, we're going to make them public. Uh, integer, we'll say Max Health. And let's set it to equal to 100. And we'll also do public int cur current health. Or I'll put as cur health. And we're going to set that to equal 100 at the start as well. Well, at the start of our script, not in the actual start function. We're not going to do anything here for now. We're also not going to do anything in update. But we are going to do some stuff in onGUI. So let's go down to that. So let's create the onGUI function. So we're going to avoid onGUI. Close that off. We're going to use a box to represent the player's health. So it's GUI.box. Now we're going to want to be able to tell it where its position and size is. So new rec. We'll fill that in a minute. But we want a string to be able to display up there. So let's do uh, the current health. We'll concat it with the division sign. And then we'll concat that with the max health. Great. So now let's tell it where we want it to be. So we want it to be 10 from the left, 10 from the top. Uh, we're going to have it at full health be half the size of the screen. And as they lose health, it will shrink down. So the maximum size it will be will be half the width of the screen. So screen dot width divided by 2. Now we're also going to want it to adjust its size according to the amount of health the player still has left. So we're also going to divide that by, uh, let me see, it would be max health divided by current health. So that should adjust the size of the bar on the screen for us according to what percentage of health they have left. And let's just make it 20 high for now. Great, let's test that out. So when we click start, we get our little health bar right here. Uh, if we click on our player, let's adjust it. Let's put them at 50% health. There we go, half the size, 10% health. Very good. And that concludes our first part of our little hack and slash tutorial series, and I'll see you next week.